Hello, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. A lot of great stories happening these past few days and hopefully coming sometime soon later this week. Also, at the end of today's video, I'll update you guys on my life updates, what's happening the next few days here as I do go out to Las Vegas to look for apartments. It's a really stressful point in my life right now, so thank you all for being with me. Let's hop into our first story, though, all about Face It Pro League and actually one of their Russian, uh, their actual Russian server as well. Of course, Face It has servers all around the world. Their Russian Face It Pro League, though, allegedly kicking two girls in the past few days, one of them being Cindy on screen for all of you. She had a long post which has since been deleted on Twitter. It's no longer available. Luckily though we did screenshot it over here where we're going to discuss the details of how she came to actually get kicked from the Russian Face It Pro League. Now allegedly in her long post as well she does say that Face It kicked her and her friend Nastia solely for the fact that they are girls. Now this brings up a long laundry list of arguments that could be brought up. We talked about in the past of course the skill difference between men and female players in the CSGO scene, other esports as well. That's a long debate we're not going to get into because it just it's very heated on both sides and we've seen in the, in the past, the backlash that females do get in the esports scene is pretty tremendous. But on this sole issue itself, we're going to focus on her actual post, Cindy's post, as well as her friend Nastia kind of commenting about this and why they think they got kicked because they were women. So during this long post, I'll link it down below, maybe a screenshot if I do have it. Otherwise, I'll show them on screen if I if I can't link it for all of you guys. She does allegedly say some, some pretty uh, factual stuff that we could actually look up itself. It's been confirmed her and her friend Nastia were actually a part of that Face It Pro League over in Russia for only a matter of days. A couple days in fact. So I would say first off my point for in their favor is the fact that they did get invited to FPL and we actually kicked just two days later. That's really not a fair thing to be doing. And if you want to of course judge a player's skill you can't do so over a course of a few matches over the, of the couple days. Now we did have players posting her stats statistically how she was doing. It was not you know too well compared to other players in FPL but on top of that where she does go wrong is her continued onslaught of male players in the scene and in particular how she tries to boost her and her friend Nasty and how they uh, how they're apparently better than all the other players and, and the, uh, they're more experienced and they've been to more big events and other players in the Russian FPL as well as comparing her KD to someone like Blade. Now Blade, she goes on to point out, is a .8 KD as well as on top of that, she goes on further to actually bring in Flipside Gaming and of course their their uh, last few matches, their last few months, been a real big struggle ever since they lost Electronic to Navi and she brings up their world team ranking of number 94 in the world. So really starts out at a great point here. She makes a great point. I do agree with her that if Face It kicked her and her friend after a couple of days of play, that's not really a fair judgment of how good they are and if they deserve to be in Face It or not. But then she just goes on and it goes subtly downhill the entire way through. Also, people replying to this and pointing out that her KD was actually lower than Blade's. And of course, the, even the obvious argument here is she is nowhere probably near the skill level of Blade, a professional CSGO player uh, compared to her, who historically speaking probably has done, not, not done near as much as Blade has. Now, on top of that, she goes on to kind of throw shade towards the male scene itself and of course the overall legend here is they were kicked because they were women and she does so without any real factual statements made. Now she has deleted her Twitter post ever since. As of right now we have no response from Face It Mikey or anyone uh, across the platform itself from Face It. Well, we'll look out for replies soon. What do you guys think about this though? Do you think these two ladies were actually kicked because they were girls? And again, uh, I do want to say I do agree with part of her argument. How she went about arguing it though, uh, it's really not the best way. So we're going to find out exactly why these girls were kicked hopefully and then in very sad news I'm sure many of you guys have seen this post I will link this one down below as of right now it's st currently still up a very saddening story from Snyder Snyder of course back in the day for Dignitas then most notoriously known for Fnatic in his time with Godsent recently he's been unemployed for quite some time nearly seven months without a team and we've actually seen some kind of some some hinting posts on his Twitter for quite some time now hinting at some things that might it might instill some some pretty uh, saddening thoughts he's been going through on his and on his side of things um, some posts I'll link on screen for all of you as as well as a post we touched on in a video a while back about him asking, uh, you know, what some good IRL jobs are for ex CSGO pro players, him concerned even going back to school. And we have now seen with this latest post, I'll show you guys some more screenshots about this that go into grave detail, uh, some really saddening details about his life the past two to three years, uh, his long term breakup with one of his girlfriends, as well as his crippling, uh, you know, de detriments with depression and bouts with drugs as well. It's a very, very saddening post to read, as well as you guys can tell, he put a lot of effort into going into great detail about his past with some. Some of these teams. He also goes into great detail as well for a TLDR for all of you guys who don't want to take the time to read the entire thing. Apparently one of the teams he formerly played for owes him an equivalent amount of just over 25,000 US dollars, which is a pretty crazy amount. As of right now, people out there are assuming it would be Fnatic, the organization who owes him allegedly that amount of money because while all the other teams he played for did not win too large of sums of prize pools that could probably uh, amount to that much money as well. And that's a pretty large amount to a player who's been unemployed for quite some time, as well as he also talked about his 
his time with Dignitas and of course him cut short on his contract there. They didn't want to pay him out for his full contract after cutting him from the team. He had to get a lawyer involved and apparently they paid out a very, very small sum of that. And just really goes into great detail about the bouts he's really struggled with when it comes to being a professional CSGO player that we never really see before. We see all these Instagram posts, all these tournaments won and of course we see the best of the best teams out there, but we never see the players who of course are on a top team, are kicked from that top team and then go unemployed for quite some time, you know, especially when their lives have been CSGO for their entire, you know, adult lives so far. What do they do if it does not work out? And it's just a really saddening post to see. So all of my my prayers and best of luck go out to Snyder, apparently taking vacation and hopefully going to be finding a team sometime in the future. Of course, the God Sent project not working out really for anyone, even if they are still on that roster over there and him formerly being of that team as well. It just goes to show you the struggles out there for CSGO pro, pro, pro players and the majority of them who do not make it or if they, even if they do make it, the struggles they still have to face. So best of luck for him. I know he was actually trying to full-time stream for quite some time. I'm not sure if that's actually working out for him. If he does go back to school or get a job, either way, best of luck to his future. And also in more big, I guess in happier news as well, we do have the x Torque trio. That is, of course, leaving Swag and AZK on the current Torqued roster. They're going to probably play in Mountain Dew League with a brand new roster. going to bring in their own players as of right now. We do have a speculated roster for them, but more importantly, the trio going away from them, Kusta, Poyo, as, long as, as well as Steel, have now joined Ghost Gaming right in time for ESL Belo Horizonte. And also on top of that, Ghost Gaming did retain their ESL Pro League spot for next season. So it's going to be cool to see Steel return to ESL Pro League. We'll see how he does throughout that a very excited moment for the team as well. ESL Bela Horizonte coming up next weekend. They are by far and away an underdog at that tournament. So we'll see how they just do. You know, teams like SK, FaZe, Mouse Sports. I think Big is also going to be there. Space Soldiers. I'm missing one or two teams there, but it's going to be a hectic tournament. And they again are the, by far and away the underdog team going there. So it's going to be cool to see if they do make it out. Uh, maybe even a top four finish would probably be a miracle run for them. Steel is back, guys, officially on even a better team. I guess you could say they'll be playing alongside Wardell as well as Sabrosa, I think, is the supposed roster going forward. So best of luck to Steel in the future. He's making gains, and apparently he is now going to be a salaried professional pro player. It's great to see. And then some roster change news out there. We do have Gambit Gaming changing their coach. Apparently Andy taking his leave of absence. His message on screen as well. Uh, his decision to actually leave the team was his own, and he also said that he, the team could not succeed with him being a roster. They need a new point of view. They need a, a new vantage point at that coaching role. So apparently he has stepped down based on his own decision, and Gambit Gaming continuing to struggle have now lost their coach, but also more important roster change news out there. We do have Luminosity Gaming apparently replacing Showtime and PKL for none other than the twin brothers themselves. Henny and Lucas both joined that roster, and this pretty much solidifies Brazilian changes in the future. It pretty much does solidify as well FNX and Phelps, uh, Cello and KNG. That roster should be going to SK Gaming. That current SK Gaming roster with Stewie2K should be going to Team Immortals or MIVR. So it pretty much changes a, a lot of big things in the Brazilian scene changing right now. This solidifies, though, the biggest changes. The twins have now joined Luminosity Luminosity Gaming. And very last of today's episode of CSK News, I want to share a story with all of you from a couple days ago. Actually, last weekend at a tournament known as ESCA Oakland. So kind of a lower tier tournament out there. Some, some lower tier teams, but also some very fun teams showed up to actually compete at the $2,500 tournament as well. On top of that, we did have a heroic comeback story for a team there known as Abe's Money Crew. Now, also on the team, a well-notable name out there and also some, some analyst uh, time for Fit Florin. He was actually on that team and competing there. On top of that, we also had some other members out there apparently go to the hospital. The team themselves, known as Abe's Money Crew, was actually forced to play 4v5s during the early parts of the tournament. And one of the members, Polly, apparently got into an accident as well and was actually returning from the hospital during the semifinals after the team had to compete by themselves. And he returns just in time to actually win the semifinals and go on to win the grand finals as well. And there he is in his hospital gown. And apparently, I'm not really sure on the full details of what the accident was, but having trouble walking back to the stage as well. He competes in his hospital gown and wins in his hospital gown. So kind of a heroic story out there and also very cool to see. And if you guys watched my full video, Thank you to all of you guys who actually do watch to the very end. I left you some liked updates in the last episode, the very end of that, talking about this next, these next few days. Today's video will actually be the last video for a few days. Now, I'm going to try and pre-record. If I get it done in time tonight, there should be my last finale episode of Valve Cases versus Gambling Cases. Expect that probably Thursday or Friday. I'm going to be in Las Vegas tomorrow. I fly out for, uh, tomorrow to Vegas to actually find an apartment. I told you guys how expensive that's going to be, so I'm not going to talk about money anymore, but I'm, I'm so nervous. I'm actually going to fly out with my family. I'm going to look at some 
some apartments, see the office where I'll be working at, and I, I cannot be more excited, but also I'm kind of, um, right now I'm home alone, I'm just, I'm nervous. I really am thinking about what's gonna happen in the future. I just, it's gonna be a crazy, a crazy ride. So thank you all for watching, seriously. I'll be in Vegas tomorrow until Thursday late that night. Expect a pre-recorded episode, and then hopefully a huge episode of news sometime Friday or Saturday, and then I do a drive out officially. I think it's gonna be next Sunday or Monday. I drive out officially, and I start work on Wednesday. So these next week and a half, please forgive me for the lack of videos. I'm gonna try my best to obviously pre-record videos, and I'll do some vlogs here and there and tell you guys about my job and the details about that as well. But besides that, not too many CSGO News episodes because I'll be so busy, I'll be on the road getting things kind of finalized over there. Um, but yeah, as always, thank you all for watching. Hope you guys all enjoyed. I will see you all next time. My name is Jake Merlike, you, and uh, goodbye, guys.